<laughs> okay, Oda, I see what you're doing there. Okay, yo, it's your boy Maj D. Monarch. What's up, my enlightened ones? We're going to get a tap the 1013 initial reaction. You already know we're going to wait until Sunday for the Viz translation before we get an in-depth analysis. But my man Oda was like, yeah, I see all the predictions. I see all the theories saying Luffy's leveling up too fast. Luffy can fight Kaido one-on-one. Luffy's Yonko level. My man was like, hold on, pump the brakes, partner. It ain't that simple. But before I get too ahead of myself, let's talk about the chapter from the beginning. Chapter 1013, Big Mom's Anarchy. The cover page is Sanji with a knife in his hand going against a shark that's dressed up like Zoro. Three sword style, sword in the mouth, all that. And if Oda's able to tie in using knives again with Sanji and Wano, ah, peak fiction, dog, peak. So basically, Ulti's passed out on the floor. Nami's like, I'm not running. I'm fighting her. Usopp, you need to choke. I got this. Usopp knows that we're in danger because Big Mom is right there and Ulti's right there. Ulti obviously is getting back up with her mythical zone type devil fruit. And then obviously Nami's gearing up to use like a tornado tempo. And I think I think Ulti basically uses observation hockey, dodges it, and grabs onto Nami. And she's rearing back about to headbutt her or something crazy. And before we know it, Prometheus. Yes, mama. Napoleon. Yes, mama. Hera. Yes, mama. And they do a fusion dance and combine and use an attack called Major Cannon. Some special beam leveled cannon that shoots right through Ulti, leaving a hole in her chest or in her stomach. Knocked out. KO. Easy claps. One hit KO. Light. Speed blitz. All that. The attack itself was something crazy. Obviously, it was a one hit KO for Ulti. But I was like, yo, Big Mom, why do you keep helping the Straw Hats? They're your enemies. What are you doing? Even the Beast Pirates are like, Ulti too? What are you doing? But Nami, Usopp, and Otami use that chance to try to get away. And as it's spreading away, Nami spots Zeus in the corner of her eye. Zeus is chilling in the corner. He is in a feeble position because he does not want anyone to spot him because he seems sad. He notices the three new homies. He's like, hold on. We got somebody else new? Like, who is this? Who is this? But we also get a little uh, banter between the homies. Prometheus and Napoleon are ecstatic because they finally get to pull off a combined attack that they haven't been able to do so far. We also figure out that what Prometheus asked for was a girlfriend. That's why he got Hera. So it seems that Hera was a little bit stronger than Zeus or more competent than Zeus at least. But Hera's like, chillax. I'm only doing this because of Big Mom, not really because of you. And Big Mom noticing that they're running away with Otama. Grabs Otama like, yo, chill. Where you going, Otama? These straw hats are bad people. And then obviously Zeus is like, okay, mama, hi, I'm back. Did you miss me? What was interesting between the exchanges of Big Mom and Zeus was that Zeus was basically apologizing, saying that, oh, Big Mom, I'm back. We can all team up. We have four people now. We'll be unstoppable. And it's almost a direct callback to the chapter before when Nami was trying to team up with Big Mom to take down Ulti or like tell Big Mom to take down Ulti. And then she was like, when I'm done with Ulti, I'm like, go after you. And then Nami, like that, switches sides like, Ulti, me and you can take down Big Mom. And Ulti's like, mm, okay, but as soon as I'm done with her, I'm coming after you. It's almost the same thing because Zeus was saying how he's sorry for big, sorry to Big Mom and how like he's back and he won't ever do something like that again. And Big Mom's like, yo, I'm done with your negligence, bro. Yo, Hera, eat him. Eat him. And as soon as that happened, Zeus was basically, yo, Nami, please, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I just never been able to defy Big Mom. Like, don't do this to me. Nami's like, we're done. Sorry, plow. Deuce. And as Hera's eating Zeus, Big Mom is trying to attack the Straw Hats. And when she's doing that, Zeus is like, okay, this is my final and my first and last act of defiance for Big Mom. And Zeus basically sacrifices himself to try to stop Big Mom from attacking the Straw Hats. And obviously Big Mom's like, bro, you are, you're my soul. Like, what are you trying to do? And she literally rips the soul out of Zeus and Hera continues to eat him. Nami sends out her thunder black balls to try to save him, but Hera eats not only Zeus, but the black balls. But here, here's the thing. I'm thinking, even though Hera ate Zeus, Big Mom didn't completely rip her soul out of Zeus, and the lack act of defiance also shows that Zeus has a thought process of his own, that he can't act on his own will. And Nami did also feed him some black balls. So if Hera eats him, you gotta remember, Zeus can eat thunder. And he's gonna be able to be in Hera's stomach, maybe eating her from the inside out, that sounded crazy, and eating the black balls, that sounded even crazier. But I feel that Zeus might be able to come back into the story because he's consuming thunder while inside Hera. But after that, we get more of Otama, Usopp, and Nami trying to run away. And here's how Big Mom's character comes back to the forefront. Big Mom is almost like a spoiled child, and whenever she doesn't get what she wants, she goes on a rampage. But even though this time was more of a control rampage and not like her hunger pangs, 
but she saw Otamba trying to run away with the straw hats and she's like, why are you trying to desert me? I do not like when people try to desert me. And basically mother mode was gone. Just like that. He's like, if you try to desert me, I'm gonna kill you too. And she rears up about to take out Otama, Usopp, and Nami. She's like, nah, I'm not having none of that. But here comes the man, the myth, the legend himself. Well, not maybe myth and legend yet, but the boy or the kid comes in with a pump, Gibson stops Napoleon from swinging down the straw hats. He's like, yo guys, this is my prey. I got this pump, Gibson. Wrong Gibson hits Big Mom. Big Mom shakes it off like kid. Kid is ready to fight. But that is not the biggest part of the chapter. Yes, kid's entry was pretty OP, even though we saw him a couple chapters ago. The best part of the chapter is at the end with Kaido and Luffy. We return to the rooftop where we saw Kaido and Luffy. Luffy is basically passed out, falling off of Onigashima. KO, eyes white, all that. And Kaido's dialogue was pretty interesting to me. Kaido basically says, you got a little bit too cocky with a new weapon in your arsenal. And he says, you humans tend to cling on to faith. He's saying that that's dangerous because humans don't abandon that faith. And if they don't abandon that faith, it can lead to dangerous things like them dying. T yes, I'm gonna wait for the Viz translation on Sunday, but him saying humans, that lit a light bulb in my head. Because Kaido, yes, he has the Ui Ui fish fish model dragon, uh, Sibiu dragon fruit. But he also, we also had questions of what kind of race is he? Like he can't just be a normal human that like he might be part of the ancient dragon race or the ancient giant race from long ago. And now that Yamato is going to the rooftop to maybe help Luffy or probably hopefully save Luffy. But I think, I think Momo with the voice of all things is going to detect a literally Luffy about to die and go and save him with his flame clouds himself. And that leads to him actually holding up Onigashima. But that's a story for another day. But the Yamato and Kaido interaction may trigger a backstory that we've been waiting for for a long time for Kaido. Kaido's literally almost in tears. He's sighing because like he had to beat Luffy and he's like, this is the first time I've been so fired up in a while that I should have took your head. And this is when Oda's basically talking directly to the fans. He's saying, if I didn't take your head and show proof, they'll still think or still have faith that you may be able to win. And that's if that's not Oda talking to all the theorists, all the YouTubers, everyone been like, yo, listen, pump the brakes, Luffy's not there yet, then I don't know what is. And overall, this chapter was like a 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. It was top tier because we got so much more from the two Yonko just showing how strong they actually are. Like, yes, we're trying to scale them to other characters in the story, but we're, we were always like, oh, have all these question marks of how is Luffy fighting Kaido one-on-one? -on -one? Big Mom is there, but she's almost a disappointment with her character and how it's flowing. But now it's just showing that, okay, the Yonkos are the Yonkos for a reason. I've been hyping these Yonkos up for a reason because they are strong and they are on a level that we have not yet seen. And we still have yet to see a lot of what Kaido can do. And now we have yet to see a lot of what Big Mom can do. Yes, this kid fight is going to be important, but Kaido fighting Yamato and hopefully maybe saving Luffy and Luffy fighting alongside them again, we get to see more of just how strong they are. Because Luffy now is going to be very wary of how strong Kaido is. Like the first time he did it with, uh, it was Crocodile. It was the first time like he fought a, uh, a great antagonist multiple times. With Crocodile, he fought him on three different occasions. He lost the first two times basically. And the third time he actually went for it. But Crocodile almost said the same exact thing. I should have killed you before because your tenacity is insane. And Kaido should have took Luffy's head because Luffy's going to come back. That's how Luffy is. Luffy's will is on another level and he will come back to fight Kaido again. And with doing so, we're going to see a level of Luffy that we haven't seen before. Hopefully Gear 5th, unlocking a Devil Fruit. But I hope he doesn't awaken a Devil Fruit. But we're going to see more of Luffy and just to see how much of a tenacious character he is and how much he does not give up. And Kaido's going to be like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. This is why I haven't died yet. I've been waiting for an ending like this. That's why he's probably sad because him uh, finishing Luffy the way he did, he wanted more. He was expecting more. So my Latin ones, with this chapter, yes, we got a lot from Big Mom and Kaido. And also it's shown by, uh, shout out Mr. Morris, while their raid may fail, it also sets up a lot for other characters to do more. Cause the last one standing out of the monster trio right now is our boy, the chef himself, the cover page boy for this week, Sanji, Black Leg Sanji. We haven't yet seen what he can do yet in this Wano arc and I'm excited to see what he can do. So don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that noti bell button cause we gonna be dropping videos almost every single day. And on Sunday when the Viz translation comes out, we're gonna go more in depth about this chapter cause it did give us a lot and it hyped up a lot of what's going to happen. So until next time y'all, peace.